everybody, it's Jessica from Fountain Creek Nature Center. Uh, welcome to my home, welcome to my kitchen table. I wanna do something a little bit different today. I don't want to stare at mm, a computer or a TV screen for a little while. I don't wanna work on real work for a little while. I would love to go outside and go birding, but today is kind of cold and dreary. I just don't wanna leave my house today for sure. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to be creative. Uh, I'm not the most artsy person at all. I don't doodle, I don't color ever, so I'm going to do my best today. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to try to be a better birder. I kind of have flipped through my bird book. This is my Sibley Guide to the Birds of Eastern North America, but of course there's a lot of birds that you can find here in Colorado. And I have chosen the Golden Crowned Kinglet. Um, I love Ruby Crowned Kinglets. They are one of my favorites. Um, a similar bird to these two is another super small gnat catching bug, which is the blue gray gnat catcher. I just think that these kinds of birds are hilarious. They're super cute. But the Golden Crowned Kinglet is one that I don't see it super often. Um, I don't know, I just was really attracted to this bird when I was flipping through my book. So I'll try a different one next time, but I really liked the colors I saw on this one. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna get started. Um, what I decided to do is I'm also going to pull up a Golden Crown Kinglet in my, I use the Audubon app on my phone. Uh, I rarely use Merlin or eBird, but uh, let's see. Golden. So many, there you go, golden crowned kinglet. Ah, oh, precious. Um, this way I'll be able to get some more details that maybe this book doesn't show me. And I'm not only going to look at the picture and just try to copy it, I want to read through the description in my book and online to see if there's any other key characteristics. Um, you know, is there a blue dot on its behind? Um, I just made that example up, but something that would help me ID it in the field, I wanna make sure that that is in my picture, so I guess I just get started. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm not an artist. I'm so nervous. Um, okay, I'm just, again, I'm not creative. I'm just gonna try to copy exactly this picture from Sibley. You know, the best of the best. Oh my gosh. You know what, this is only for me. Um, I've started on this. Back. Oh gosh, I'm not gonna have room for his tail. Whatever, it's okay. Um, oh no, I gotta stop being so nervous, you guys. So the golden crown kinglet, they're super small, the two kinglets are. Um, how I describe the ruby crowned kinglet to folks, and I would do the same with the golden crown kinglet, is I would say it's a good naked eye birding bird because it's so small that if you see it you're like oh my gosh that is smaller than a chickadee it can only be so many things and it all automatically um, narrows it down to a few species so I don't like how I did his face I feel like his face is a little bit more it drops down and then it says a tiny bill it's got a tiny bill that is perfect for catching gnats. It's short, thin, and pointed. He's gonna be able to catch insects very precisely, like using chopsticks to catch a fly. Um, I bet it looks better when I start to fill it in. Mm, let's see, it looks like up to his rump. Just gonna get those rump feathers. So in Sibley's guide, it is on a perch, and that left foot is hidden. Sounds good to me. One less thing for me to draw. Oh my goodness. Oh, so. I would have never thought about it until I'm about to draw it, but check out how his legs are black and his feet are yellow. I feel like that's pretty unique. Look at that, I've already learned something. Okay, I'll just fill that in later. Oh, 
Okay, the toes, <laughs> I don't need to be too exact on the toes. That's fine. Huh, I don't know. <laughs> Let's see. I'm gonna go back up to the face and maybe just start coloring because I'm very nervous about doing the tail and I need a, um, I need a little bit of a, a confidence booster. Let's see, so his eye is directly back behind his bill, so I'll start with that. He's got a striped face. So let's see, it looks like there's... I guess I'll go ahead and shade this in. Although, I, maybe I should have done this with black colored pencil. Giving him an eyeball already made him cuter. So there's some shading on the inside of his eye. Um, it looks like, here I'll fill in his bill, and it looks like coming from his bill, almost like a little cute mustache, um, it comes down, there's like a dark streak. Not really past his eye under there. Um, and then we will continue with this beautiful... Does his makeup better than I do? Let's see, I'm going to use my black colored pencil. Okay, okay. <laughs> it looks like there is, let's see, kind of some shading. Ooh, thank you, that's a nice picture. Yeah, it looks like in real life photos and in the book, it's, it's always a, a smidge different, so I'm not going to worry too terribly much. Let's see, but we'll start. There's going to be light right above his eye as well. Okay, okay. I feel like we're starting to look like Golden Crown King Okay. Um, moving on to the fun part. So in a lot of these photos, and then also in Sibley's guide, it looks like it's less gold and more like fire orange, <laughs> um, yellow. Let's see. Um, I think it's kind of more, well, let's see. Let's start with a yellow. And then I'll do orange on top. You know what? I want to erase the pencil I did earlier, just so I can really make sure that his little tuft Is a little on display. I'm going to add a smidge of red just to deepen. Okay, not bad, not 
kind of muddling the lines. Because this color is made of feathers, so it's not going to be a perfect straight line like in this picture. There's definitely some fluff going on. Hmm. Let's see. So on his face, let's see, crest, tiny bill, striped face. I mean, you know, if you were to show me only this, I would say, oh, you're trying to draw a ruby crown kinglet, so we're good. I feel fine. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue from his face and work my confidence back to his tail. Um, it looks like it stays pretty white until almost the end here, and it's, I'm going to give him an overall grayish um, tint, and then I'll go back over with, I would call this like an olive. I might pick my, I have a tan colored pencil. I might kind of go through and experiment with these three colors after I give them kind of a base gray. Um, and then there's an even a chance where I attempt to add a little bit of green just to give it a, a, a dirty yellow, an olive-ish yellow. <laughs> um, we'll see. I'm gonna make his back and neck not be so different. Okay. And so there's still white on the face under the eye and it kind of connects down to that stripe and then there's some white on his throat as well how far does that go down mm. Ooh, thank you I don't know. <laughs> we'll fill this in. It doesn't look like there's too much of a, a white chest on the on Sibley's picture, but in the Audubon guide, it, I don't know, it looks pretty whitish to me, so... Oh, goodness. Let's see. Where should his wings be? I'm going to go ahead and note where his wings will be. don't know where to go next. I'll do his wings and then kind of I'll fill in the rest of it. So his long wings really extend back here. I'm going to erase his back because his wings are going to be covering his back. starting to look like a real bird. This is kind of cool. I might have to do this more often. So now as we reach the end, we're getting to those long primary feathers. <laughs> See, I feel like this angle should be more up. I 
It's okay, he can fly. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to imagine where his back would continue right about here and give him the outline of his tail. Oh, and in Sibley's guide, oh, I was going to say his tushy looks kind of weird, um, <laughs> but I see now that it's um, this lower belly feathers are poofed up, but I do see the undertail coverts, which are more white. That looks a little bit better. I'm still nervous about doing the main body and the wing, but I'm already so far into the tail. I'm just gonna start practicing. Yeah, so that is yellow, yellow. That's not like the yellow we're going for. So let me tone it down a little bit. looks really brown or um, yellow it looks really yellow to me so I'm gonna keep trying to tone it down hmm that's okay I think what I'll do next time is I'll just be much more light with my primary yellow oh, let's see where should I go now I'm gonna round out where I want. Where I want my belly, where I want any white, gray. I wouldn't say it's like totally white, so I'm going to, can I do this? That doesn't really work, but what if I used a pencil? kind of works. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I guess maybe I'll do very short light strokes. You know, just uh, there's there's feathers. It does it's not a flat color. Okay. Um That works for now. Let me get while I've got the black in my hand kind of the defining characteristics of this wing. That leading edge. Give that some dark definition. Ooh. 
Mm. Boldly patterned wings with bright green secondary edges. Um, the secondaries, there's on a bird's wing, there are the primary feathers that come all the way down to the very tip. And then there's the secondary feather that as the bird is in flight, it's these feathers that kind of point behind it. So the very tippity tip tips, those are the primaries and then the secondaries back here. So what it's saying is the wings overall are boldly patterned with green secondary edges. I'm not going to use literary, um, literally <laughs> green, um, but it's talking about more of that olive yellow green that birds often have. Okay, um, so this white wing bar right here, I'm gonna just outline where that is and then build around it. See, it's in pictures on the internet as well. In my Audubon app. Trying to muddle that line that I just did because the feathers are going to be not parallel to that. See, there is, aha, so I think that this difference right here where the yellow juts up and there's just this little black, I think those are the primaries and the secondaries are that other section, the bases of those feathers. Okay, I had to fix my camera. My battery ran out on my camera. Um, but what I was saying, if I missed it, was um, I just made sure that there's a line from here, this black bar right here that separates this black area here, um, this white. I made sure to draw a line directly from this end all the way down to the black tips of my primary feathers. So this is showing that these, is my, these are my primaries and these are my secondaries. Um, and we'll see how far we can get. But when I stood up and like walked a few feet away from this, I realized, oh my gosh, this is really looking like a real golden crown kinglet. So I'm super excited. Um, so if you have more creative artistic ability than I do, um, which is likely, <laughs> it definitely encourages activity. I'm feeling accomplished. This is one for the refrigerator. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with that game plan of just doing long black stripes, just to give the appearance or the idea of there's long feathers. I don't think I like what I was just doing there. Makes it look like it's unkept feathers. I 
I'm going to practice my yellow. It looks like the rest of these wings it looks like it's just shades of that olive yellow and blacks and grays. So I'm going to do that really faint. Yeah, I like that better. On the tail, I just like went all in on this bright primary circus clown yellow. But I like it a lot better if it's more muted like this. I still have that flesh color. Let me go through. Still think it would be a little better darker, so. And I don't know if I would, you know, if I was looking at a golden crown kinglet in the wild and I had to describe it to somebody, I don't know if I would ever use the color brown. I don't know if I would use that word. So I have this light brown. Oh, it says tan, this tan colored pencil. But that's just to make that yellow a more earthy olive yellow. That's not bad. Okay. Um, just to further boost my <laughs> my sense of confidence, this leg. I'm gonna wrap that leg up since it looks like that will need the primary yellow. Um, maybe more so the orange. Um, Oh, I don't like the orange. <laughs> um, okay, okay. Let's see in these pictures. Well, in these pictures on the Audubon app, the feet are not exactly as yellow, orange, bright as the Sibley Guide. Hmm. Okay. Not a big deal. Not a big deal. I guess I'll just shade them a smidge so it's not as eye-catching. I'm happy with that. Let's see. All right, now I just have to, now that I've kind of figured out my game plan for the coloring through here, I guess I just jump on in. Um, I'm gonna give it that base. Colored pencil doesn't seem to smear as easily as the pencil pencil, yeah, the normal graphite pencil. <laughs> as you see, I smudged normal pencil all down here. Oh, wait, I have an eraser. That looks better. I'll save any more cleanup for the end. I'm 
gonna leave the undertail. Well, let's see. Those undertail coverts. The zoom in of a kinglet hiney. I guess the undertail coverts stay pretty wide. I'm just gonna keep that there. Um, I guess the chest and this belly area. I'm not gonna touch that anymore. I don't think. I'm just gonna kind of rub out the pencil marks. And then let's just dive into coloring him. Hmm. Another trick is I'm not drawing individual feathers, but I want to, I just had to remind myself to stay my, keep my pencil strokes in the direction that the feathers would be going, um, just to give that really minimal illusion of a streamlined, groomed bird with feathers that are all going towards its rear side. So no coloring like this, unless you want to. These are just for us. And I still want to, I think I still am gonna go over with um, maybe my black colored pencil again, just to darken this up, but I'm gonna continue with that earth tone for now. too hard. Eh. I think I about have that base color. I'm gonna back off <laughs> for a second. Um, want this eye street to fade into the feathers on its back a little bit better.
think it might help if so on the wing we were do, I was doing this these long colored pencil strokes but I think on the back I'm going to try to go with shorter strokes since these are shorter feathers Okay, okay. So in Sibley's guide, it looks like, I almost did this, I almost did this to zoom in on this book. <laughs> um, in his book, it looks like right in between the bill and that black stripe leading to the crest, it looks like there's almost this tan color. Let's see if that's any, if I can see that in any of these pictures. Hello? I don't know. We'll do that just to jazz it up a little bit. Okay. I don't think that mustache is quite that thick and it seems in these pictures and kind of in the book as well, it seems that it originates more from the top of the bill than the whole bill itself. Okay. There's just a little bit of gap where the white comes through. Looks that way in the book and in my app. Yeah, I guess I'm unhappy with that tail, but that was just the lesson I learned from going too hard with that yellow earlier. But the next bird um, that I try, I'll definitely remember that tip. Um, I think I'm happy with this. Let me read through the description to see if anything else pops up. Um, common in mature trees, usually high in spruce and other conifers. Um, what I might do, I think it'd be kind of cute if I kept drawing with those greens and browns and maybe if I tried to put it in um, a spruce or some conifer, um, a Douglas fir, and just maybe put a pine cone if I turned this into a full color scene, a full portrait. Um, usually high in spruce and other conifers almost always in small groups of three to eight, often mixes with chickadees, creepers, and others, gleans tiny insects from branches, often hangs upside down while foraging or hovers at tips of branches. Okay, I took a quick break just then because my roommate came home, so I took that moment to have lunch myself. Um, but I'm back. Let's see, I think I'm as happy as I can be with my kinglet himself. Uh, let's see, I know that I was talking about maybe on my own time um, filling in branches of a Douglas fir or giving him a habitat. Let's see, I was talking about how Gleans tiny insects from branches, often hangs upside down while foraging or hovers at tips of branches. This is another 
burning with your naked eyes tip, these behaviors. So not a lot of birds behave like that, do that hovering and flitting around constantly. I've only seen a handful of these in my whole life. Um, I'm not even sure if I've seen one in Colorado yet, but every time it happened, oh my gosh, they would not sit still. They're the, for me at least, the hardest to photograph because they are constantly moving so they can catch insects um, mid-air frequently. Let's see, hangs upside down. Again, not a ton of birds do that. Tiny, distinguished from the ruby-crowned kinglet by its striped face. The song, a ser let's see, song is a rising series of very high, thin notes followed by a tumbling, jiggity like chatter. Let's see if I can play that. Yeah. There you go. So that rising series of high thin notes and that tumbling chickadee almost like chatter at the end. I get it. Um, call a very high, thin, slightly buzzing z z z. There's almost a little raspy buzz to the beginning. I get it. Okay. So I'll probably listen to these a few more times so I, because I, you might hear these before you see them if they're constantly moving high up in treetops for insects. You're, you're going to get what we call warbler neck <laughs> um, by looking for them. You're going to be looking high. They're so small. They move so fast. It might help to know this song if this is your target species for the day. Um, okay, I think I'm done with this. This is going to go in my fridge for a little bit. Um, comment if you have any more requests. I have all these bird books. I can pick another bird if you want to challenge me. Um, you know, I think I kind of picked an easy one for me to start with, but leave me a comment to challenge me. I also have books on mammals and insects, butterflies, moths. Uh, I can look up other things. So if you have a request or if you want to see me challenge myself even further, um, drop a comment. Let us know. Until then, please Look to nature for inspiration on how to be creative and learn new things while we're all cooped up inside. Bye, guys.